Hey guys, my name is Adman and welcome to my channel. I study computer science at City University of London and that's in Northampton Square in central London. One of the things that I was scared about CS degree was maths because I always struggled math in high school, well from school, high school to college, I always struggled math. So maths was a subject that I don't really like it. Uh, I had to do it because compulsory but otherwise I wouldn't have done it. However, uh, in uh, maths in computer science is very different. So uh, maths in computer science is more like practical stuff. And also you can apply this maths in a real life situation or in your next program. For instance, uh, one of my first lecture that I did was a Russell Paradox on a set theory. And so Russell Paradox says that in a city there are people and a barber. So if everyone shaves themselves or barber shaves themselves, then who shifts the barber? So this was a Russell paradox, which was kind of interesting. Uh, on computer science, the maths are more related to a real life event. So that's that's why it's more interesting compared to those boring uh, uh, trigonometry in, uh, um, yeah, in college or in the high school. Also another question that I had in mind when I was choosing the degree was what GCSE maths grade do people have in order to study computer science? Well guys, in GCSE, uh, uh, normally you have anything below three is fail and anything above uh, four is pass. So anything above three is pass, so four, five, six are all pass. And uh, yeah, so if you get four, that's, that's, that's fine. But anything above four, so five is perfectly fine. Yeah, so above five is uh, the best way to go. But even with four, you can do very, very well. Because unlike GCSE and AS level, I know about AS level because I've done it. I've done, I haven't done A level, so I can't tell about A level. But yeah, uh, computer science math is more fun and is more enjoyable to do. So you'll generally uh, like to do uh, uh, exercises in math. So you'll generally enjoy doing maths in a degree level compared to the maths in a GCSE. Because how does soccer to and trigonometry in GCSE maths matter in your life? You're not going to be, of course, building uh, pyramids, so it doesn't really matter. So you see, you can't really relate it, uh, those problems in a real life situation. There's the uh, boring side of uh, GCSE maths compared to uh, computer science math, which is you can see the problem and you can figure out solution by doing the math. Yeah. So that's the best thing about computer science. Now let's jump into my computer and I'll show you my math module. So this is the math module that I had on semester one. As you can see, we had eight session, so eight week, eight session, sorry, nine week and eight session because uh, somewhere in between session four and five, you have a reading week. I'm not sure what the session after three or four or maybe four or five. So uh, somewhere over here or over here, we had a reading week. So reading week is just a one week off, it's a half term. So on session one, we had a, a set theory. On session two, we had set operation and relations. So these two are related. And then on session three, we had functions. On session four, we had propositional logic. On session five, we had logical implication and predicate logic. On session six, we have vectors and matrices. On session seven, we had probability, and finally we had graph theory on session eight. So I'll show you each of them. So on each session, you have uh, one uh, uh, note, so you can read by notes or you can watch video. Uh, yeah, so underneath that, you have all the videos, yeah, all the videos for the session. The good thing about this module is that that one hour of boring lecture session is divided into a small digestible uh, part or chunk. So as you can see, we have about nine part over here. But the first one, ignore about this because this is just uh, introduction about the module. So we have eight, yeah? And uh, these are very short videos, so about five to eight minutes each. Overall to give you about 45 minutes to one hour and 10 of lecture material. And which is a, a great thing guys, because I like this way, because uh, say for instance, I can watch my first three video and then go out for a walk or something and then come back and uh, uh, watch the remaining three videos and then have a lunch and then come back again and then watch the remaining three videos again so which is a great thing because say for instance i didn't understand something on the uh the number system or uh, the cardinality of subset then i can come back and now uh, uh, watch that specific video uh, and uh, avoid watching the entire one hour of lecture so by ignoring the first one we have uh eighth part so the first part was about set so introduction about the set then cardinality and subset empty set and power set, number system, natural number and rational number, counter diagonalizational argument, uh, existence of irrational number. And then we have the Russell paradox. And then if I scroll down, I can see two PowerPoint over here. So the first one was introduction to the module. And the second one was a slide for the lecture one. So uh, every lecture have got their own PowerPoint. So uh, your lecturer will present from that PowerPoint. And this is the, uh, the lecture slide that we have. So all of these videos are contained in this slide. Yeah, so you can just uh, yeah, read through the slide as well if you want to. So say for instance, if you want to get a quick idea about uh, the lecture, then I would go over here and uh, read from the slide instead of uh, watching this one hour uh, session or 
reading from the notes because notes are more explained stuff. So all the uh, things that they talk about in the lecture are well defined in the note. So therefore notes are longer and boring stuff, not attractive. So uh, always go through the slides if you want to get a quick idea about what the lecture is about. And after that, we have some exercises over here. So as you can see, we have uh, the exercise and, and as well as the solution. So the answer. But the answer is only released after the lecture and the tutorial has happened. So on the day after the tutorial has happened, uh, you'll get your solution over here and you can compare them. Yeah, and also you get a few other stuff. So things like uh, executable program. Yeah, you can try them on, on your uh, free time, but I, which I have never tried. Okay, and finally, depending on the lecturer, uh, but most likely they will record the session. So uh, these are all uh, Zoom session and they will record it. So what will happen is that they might do Q&A session, which is you answer them question and they will reply back. Otherwise, they might just revise the lecture content. So which is going back and then uh, uh, revising each of those material discussed on the lecture. And like the lecture, the plenary session as well is for one hour long. So yeah, you have one hour of plenary session uh, yeah, each week for your module. And then we have session two, which is the second week. And this is set operation and relation. So this one is related to the first week, which was set theory. And uh, yeah, so as you can see the same structure over here as well. So you have a note, which is a long set of instruction and yeah, content. And then we have lecture. So as you can see, we start with the introduction and recap. So you talk about the f uh, previous week lecture. So just to recap very quick. And then you have the uh, actual raw content of this week. So which is week two. So we talk about set operations, Venn diagram and membership table. Then we talk about counting, inclusion, exclusion. Then we talk about products uh, and pairs, relations, and yeah, that's all. So it's not that long. And then we have the slide for the lecture, for this lecture. And then we have the tutorial section. So over here we have the tutorial questions and then their answers as well. Finally, we have the recording of the live session. So yeah, there you go. And then we're going on the week three. So week three was about function. And this week I had an exam, yeah. So as you can see, uh, yeah, we started with the notes. So these are all the notes. Then the lecture. So uh, the first one is always a recap of the uh, lecture, uh, yeah, of the content done in the previous lecture. And then you have the actual uh, content over here. So function, then we have properties of the function. Then you have some useful function and then a recursive function. And then you have the slide, a tutorial is the same. So you have the, your actual uh, exercises and then the answer. And you have some other stuff to try them in your own time. Then we have the MCQ. So the MCQ stands for multiple choice questions. So these are quiz. And so the first one was a practical quiz. So you can just practice them. Uh, they don't count as your uh, module mark. But the second one does. So this one is the uh, actual MCQ. And finally, we have the live recorded session. Now on week four, we're talking about the propositional logic. So over here, is th uh, this week was uh, very interesting to me. I really like the propositional logic. So we're talking about the logical connectives, truth table properties, and then equivalences, and then some rules of, of this logic. And finally, the same structure. And then we have the logical implication and predicate logic. So this is relevant to this week's, uh, yeah, the previous week's session, superposition logic. Over here we have uh, uh, modus ponens, syllogism, modus tonens, disjunctive syllogism and reduction. Uh, uh, then we have predicate logic, then you have universal quantifiers, and then we have existential quantification and plus negation of quantifiers. This is very interesting as well. And then also this week we had uh, two exams. So we had a practice uh, MCQ, which is the, doesn't count as your overall uh, grade mark, so module mark. And then we had the actual, uh, yeah, actual test. And then on week six, we talk about the vector and matrices. So we talk about uh, yeah matrices, uh, matrix addition and two times two matrix multiplication, and then three times three matrix uh, matrix multiplication. And then we had matrices as transformation. Then we had inverse of matrix Gaussian elimination with the two variables and Gaussian elimination with the three variables. Okay, then on uh, week seven, we had a lecture about probability, which I still struggle probability. But here we had a uh, sample space, independent events, sampling with and without replacement, quick reminder, uh, yeah, MCQ. Okay, non-independent events, then conditional probability and Bayes theorem. Uh, here as well, we have uh, uh, our third multiple choice question uh, yeah, quiz. On week eight, we had a lecture about the graphs. So we had a lecture on uh, the graph theory. So uh, yeah, the graph uh, paths. Uh, subgraph, uh, graph isomorphism, weighted graph, and other algorithms. And yeah, so that's what we had on uh, the maths module. So yeah, it was overall very, very nice thing. And it's not hard, it's not hard at all. So that's all for this video, guys. I hope you like it. And as you can see, the maths in computer science is not that hard as you thought it would be. Guys, I had the same misconception when I was at your shoes. So yeah, it's not that hard. You can definitely get on with maths. It's not a big deal. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.